Welcome or welcome back to the Relentless Sportsman channel. My name is Corey and on the Relentless Sportsman channel we talk about everything from deer strategy, catching fish, how-to educational videos, videos in the field, scouting, everything outdoors hunting and fishing. So I'm glad you're here. This is a video showing you exactly how to use a fly with a spinning rod and not just how to use it but how to rig it up. There's evidence of it too as well. I'm going to show you how I actually have caught fish on this in the past. Proof that it works. Don't go anywhere. Trout on the dry fly. So let's talk about the gear you're going to need to do this. It's very, very simple, very, very easy. First thing you're gonna need is a spinning rod, of course. I use a light action spinning rod. I have a thousand size spinning reel on here. That's what I use. Then of course, on your main line, you're gonna want something that has weight that gets your fly out to the distance you want it to go to. What I use is a natural looking Rapala. This is the original Rapala, the silver and black. And on the end of my main line to connect the Rapala, I use a snap swivel. From the Rapala, what you want to do is then use the same line, preferably mono because it floats. I always go with mono in this situation. You want to use the same line as your main line. So this is four pound mono. My leader coming off of my Rapala is also four pound mono. Then of course attached to that would be some type of dry fly. Now you can use any dry fly you want. It just depends what the fish are biting that day. You'll, you'll most likely need to experiment a little bit, but that's basically the setup. Now let me explain the Rapala just a little bit. I use a snap swivel on here for a couple of reasons. One, it attaches the Rapala really easily and the fish aren't going for the Rapala anyways. So they're not gonna see it. It's not gonna scare them off. It does add a little bit of casting weight. So that's also going to help. And most importantly, if I choose to use a different bait, like some kind of spoon, a common spinner bait, like a Panther Martin, I use those quite a bit, then I can easily take this Rapala off, put it away, and attach something else quite quickly if that's the fish are biting on that day. So there are two points I want to make strongly in this video. One, when you attach your main line to the Rapala with the snap swivel, you need to make sure it's attached to the same loop as your leader. A lot of people, if they've used this rig before, often attach their main line to this loop and their leader to the other loop, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. But what I found is you get far more line twists and the leader kind of wraps around your Rapala or your minnow bait. If I attach the leader to the front of it, most of the time the casts are okay. I don't have to worry about line twists, but every once in a while you'll get a line twist and when I attach it back here to the same point as my main line on this loop or this loop, it doesn't matter. They basically need to be on the same loop. So in other words, your main line, which is here, needs to be on the same loop as your leader, which is here coming out from the minnow bait. The reason why I choose this minnow bait, it's like a two inch Rapala, is that it's a natural presentation. It's not a big bright orange one, although I have seen people use those and they work. And I also use it because it's plenty of weight for four pound mono. If you're fishing larger fish, like big browns in your creek or big steelhead or whatever, you're gonna wanna up your line, obviously, your reel and your spinning rod. I just use a light action spinning rod, a thousand pound spinning reel, four pound mono, and a little Rapala like this, simply because a lot of the fish around here, the trout in particular, aren't big. The second point I wanna make is that you need to take off your treble hooks. You can see here, my treble hooks have been removed. You can remove those many ways. Uh, you can just cut them off, or you can take the swivel off, the little O-ring on there, and remove them, and use them again later for something else. The second thing you wanna do is take off this bill, this lip on here, that makes this crankbait have action in the water. It doesn't need to have action. You're not going to catch fish with this. This is just a device to use to get the bait out there far enough so you can cast in the correct area. What I use to take the lip or that bill off of that floating Rapala is just a really simple cheap wire snips. It works really well for cutting around it. You can pull it out but I recommend just snipping it off. It's going to be really easy and super quick. 
Now, if you're on YouTube searching up how to rig a spinning rod with a fly, which is probably why you're watching this video, you're gonna find lots of different ways to do this. I'm not saying my way is the only way. I did not invent this technique that I'm showing you. I discovered this after doing lots and lots of research to find out the best way, lots of trial and error, which brings me to my next point I wanna to talk to you about. You may have seen or used bobbers in this situation. What I mean by that is that some people that trout fish, they often use bobbers on their spinning gear with a fly and that's the weight that gets their fly out in the fish's location. And in my opinion, that's not the best way to catch trout using spinning gear in a fly. The reason for that is because trout are very sensitive fish. They get scared very, very easily. So if you toss out your rig with a bobber instead of the floating Rapala, there's a good chance that bobber is gonna make the fish a little more cautious and less likely to bite the fly that you want them to bite in the first place. So if you decide to use a bobber instead of a Rapala, go ahead. I have seen it work, but I believe that bobbers are going to scare the fish more than a Rapala would, simply because it's not a natural presentation of something they would naturally eat in their environment. This is especially true in really clear streams. There are some streams that I fish that are ultra clear. You would never even think about using a bobber simply because the fish are going to see it from a mile away and they won't even consider going for your fly. Watch this little clip from a while ago when I was out there trying to catch some brook trout with the fly on a spinning rod. Here we go you guys. Nice. Trout on the dry fly. Let's let them go. See you later. Perfect. That was nice. Right there, just past the bridge. All right, that's it. That's really all you need to know about rigging this up. You see me catch a fish on it. You see me demonstrate the gear that you need and how to set it up. It's very simple and the best news is most anglers have small Rapalas in their tackle somewhere whether you use them a lot or not. And if you don't use them, this is a good way to use it without having to throw it out. And if you do need to purchase one, the Rapala I showed you is super cheap. It's the most basic Rapala they make. Make sure it's a floating Rapala, obviously. Get that line and the leader on the same loop of the Rapala, either the front or the back. Get out there, catch some fish, try it out. Make sure you've got some good flies that the fish are going for that evening. And if you try it and it works, you're probably going to be hooked. So when the fish aren't going for spinners and spoons and those types of baits, you might want to consider putting on a fly on your spinning rod. And a question you might want to ask me is, why don't you just get a fly rod? Well, I do have a fly rod, but I don't want to carry two rods with me when I'm going up a stream. And most anglers out there don't have fly rods to begin with. So this gives them a good opportunity to use flies without having to buy really expensive fly rod, fly line, and get into that whole culture of the outdoors. Not that I'm against it, I think it's a great thing to do, but if you don't want to spend the money or have the time to invest in that whole area of fishing, this is a great way to get out there and enjoy fly fishing, fly fishing, without having to purchase all the equipment. Thanks for stopping by the Relentless Sportsman channel today. I really appreciate you viewing this video, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing down below. It really helps the channel grow. I'd appreciate it very much. Until next time, good luck out there in the water or in the woods. Bye-bye.